Thursday night football is right around the corner as the best team in the NFL, the 1-6 Atlanta Falcons, take on the Carolina Panthers in, in this NFC South showdown. Cannot wait for you guys to join me in watching the Falcons collapse yet again. Speaking of the NFC South, Tom Brady is on the road to win his seventh Super Bowl. They currently lead the division with a 5-2 record, but is Tom Brady going to win that seventh ring down in Tampa Bay? And if he were to win another Super Bowl, what does that mean for his legacy? Should we be impressed this year if he were to win a Super Bowl? I mean, that's, that roster is stacked as it is. We're going to be discussing that and much more, including his former team, the New England Patriots, the heir apparent for the time being, Cam Newton, for Tom Brady, not having that good of a season. Can he turn it around and can Bill Belichick turn it around and help this Patriots team go to the playoffs? Gardner Minshew has multiple fractures in his throwing hand. Are the Jaguars ready to move on from him? As well as the toughest division in football, the NFC West. Who's going to be running away with that division title? And can all four teams make the playoffs this season? That and much more on this brand new episode of Time to Football. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of the show. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday. We started doing this podcast on Thursdays, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to give you guys a pregame show prior to the Thursday night football matchup. Instead of watching NFL Network's coverage or Fox Sports coverage, which they do a good job of, you can join us and interact with us live as we premiere this video on YouTube. If you guys are watching this video on YouTube, whether it be on mobile, whether it be on a computer, you can chat with us. I'm going to be joining you guys in the chat so we can chat back and forth. You can ask any questions you want. You can give your opinions on any of the topics that we talk about. I'm going to be interacting with you guys and make this interactive for you guys. But if you're listening to this podcast up on iTunes, just know that we have a YouTube channel. Go over to youtube.com slash time to football. Subscribe to us on there, vice versa. If you want to listen to us on the go, go over to the podcast app on your iPhone. Subscribe to us, rate and review, and listen to us Uh, on the audio experience but like we talked about many topics to talk about in this show the Thursday night football matchup is coming up my favorite team the Atlanta Falcons oh man they've definitely been a letdown they've been a letdown ever since they lost the Super Bowl let's just be honest but I decided to show my team spirit why not I, I support my team even in the wrong even in the bad because when they turn it around and when they start doing good and when they finally win that Super Bowl when I'm 70 years old and we have grandchildren it's going to be fulfilling. It really is. So I'm going to, wearing my Atlanta Falcons shirt. I had this pretty nifty snapback of the Atlanta Falcons. Pretty old school, isn't it? It was signed by Matt Bosher, former Falcons punter. So uh, thanks, Matt, for uh, signing that one. And then whenever I get thirsty, I, I have this beautiful Rise Up cup that I'm going to be sipping out of. Mm. Oh, man. Almost choked on that. But many topics to to talk about on this show, but first, you know what we have to do. Every single week, we have to award the Hungriest Player of the Week. Hungriest Player of the Week, the one that wanted it the most. By the way, you might notice this might be a new setup, new microphone, new computer. That's because I lost uh, one cable for my other microphone. So I had to go old school and just bring the laptop onto the desk in case you guys are wondering. I don't think any of you guys are. That was pointless, but let's just move on. Hungriest player of the week, the one that wanted it the most. There's a lot of players that we want to talk about. This isn't necessarily a player of the week, the one with the most stats or the best stats. Because you could give that to honorable mentions like Justin Herbert, like Tyler Lockett, like Tom Brady, like Devontae Adams. All of them balled out in week seven. And deserving of the hungriest player for sure. But we like to give this award to someone who's not well known. And that is Jeff Wilson Jr. Man, he stepped up and took the most of his opportunities. And we're going to explain why he is deserving of the hungriest player of the week. Okay, so his stats. Pretty awesome, right? 17 carries, 112 yards, 3 touchdowns. Okay, yeah, that's awesome in itself. But what if I told you... He wasn't the starting running back at the beginning of the year. He's involved in a timeshare committee. So he's with Jerry McKinnon. He's with Raheem Mostert, with Tevin Coleman. Whenever those guys were hurt, all three of those guys were banged up. Even though Jerry McKinnon was active, Kyle Shanahan said he wanted to give him a little bit of a rest. Jeff Wilson decided, let let me step up. Let me just destroy the New England Patriots who are so good at stopping the run. He stepped up and scored three touchdowns. And during his third touchdown, might I add, he got injured he's out indefinitely he hurt his ankle he was down on the turf all of his teammates 
gathered around them, looking at him. Jeff, Jeff, are you okay? Are you okay? On the turf, looking up. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to put my team on my back. I took one for the team. You go on. You go on without me. I'm out indefinitely. Goodbye. Goodbye. He took one for the team, and he is out for a few weeks, and Jeff Wilson scored three touchdowns to help the 49ers pick up a victory, sacrifice his body in the process, and that is why he is the hungriest player of the week. Our hungriest player of the week, not the checkdowns. Hungriest player of the week. Stop stealing my award, NFL. Moving on to the topics for today. Tom Brady is on pace, is on track to make the NFL playoffs. Can he win a seventh Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? And if he were to, should we be impressed if he were to win another Super Bowl in his illustrious career? Okay, so we have to unpack this. First of all, let me start off by saying I am not taking anything away from Tom Brady. Okay, what he's accomplished, six Super Bowls. I believe he's the greatest quarterback of all time. I really believe that. Uh, Other people and all of you guys that don't believe that he's not the greatest quarterback of all time, you guys are just stirred up in your emotions. You just can't admit it because you just hate to see Tom Brady win. But if you just analyze it and if you really think about it, guys, just admit it. It's okay. He's the greatest quarterback of all time. That's okay. It's 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 a given. It's a given. And if he wins the seventh Super Bowl, that's going to add on to his legacy. It really is. But not by much. The numbers are going to be there. He's going to have a seventh Super Bowl title. But if you really dive into it and you really look into the season, you have to put an asterisk by it. Is it really that impressive if he would have won a Super Bowl with Tampa Bay? The reason I ask that is because you got to look at the roster that they have in Tampa Bay. Tom Brady signs. They move on from Jameis Winston. They're done. Okay, looking back in the offseason. And then all of a sudden, everybody, everyone wants to come down to Tampa Bay. Okay, you've got Rob Gronkowski coming out of retirement to come down to Tampa Bay. Leonard Fournette, when he got released uh, before the season started, he signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. LaShawn McCoy signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Manta Tay's girlfriend wants to sign with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Everybody wants to sign with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And then the latest addition... Antonio Brown, one of the best receivers of the past decade, has signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Okay, so that just means that this offense is crazy good. And for you guys that play fantasy football, that means that I would stay away from every single person on that Tampa Bay Buccaneers roster because they're just going to be splitting time, splitting shares, splitting targets, splitting carries. The only person I really trust on that Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense is Tom Brady on that fantasy football roster in the fantasy football perspective. But if we want to talk about real football, that Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense is pretty freaking loaded. And that defense is not that bad on top of that. The secondary could use a little bit of help here and there, but the run defense is not that bad. <sighs> Brady, if he were to win a seventh Super Bowl, in my eyes, is not going to be that impressive. I mean, I will be impressed that the fact that Tom Brady is still getting it done Uh, in his 40s, and he can win Super Bowl after Super Bowl after Super Bowl. I am going to be impressed at the end of the day, but is it going to be as impressive as the other Super Bowls? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. For you guys that are NBA fans, you can make the same argument with someone like LeBron James, always going to a different team after different team, and then other players wanting to sign with him and play with him in the process. Tom Brady might be in the same boat. But if I'm Tom Brady, that's not like something to be upset about. Who cares? Who cares what other people think? You're going to win a Super Bowl. You've got one of the stacked, most stacked rosters in probably the past 5, 10 years. You're going to win another Super Bowl or you're on track of winning another Super Bowl. That's what it says on paper so far. But let's talk about what happens if Tom Brady were not to win that Super Bowl. I mean, I think it's going to be a bigger blow if you want to talk about legacy, which I don't even know why I really brought up this topic because who cares about legacy? Who really cares what other people think? Okay, that's for you guys to talk about. That's for you guys to decide. Players don't really care. Players don't. But if you guys want to talk about legacy, this is going to hurt his legacy even more if he can't get it done with the Tampa Bay Bay Buccaneers. I I think that you have everything in your hands. You have everything that you've, you've wanted. You have an offense that you did not have in New England. And that's why part of the reason why you decided to move on from the Patriots. 
part of the reason why you said it was just time to move on, you have everything in your hands, everything in your power to just go and grab that Super Bowl, win a a Super Bowl in that hometown of Tampa Bay where the Super Bowl is going to be played. And if you don't win, the season is going to be a bust. It really is. So for those other NFC teams that they're going to be running into in the playoffs, I'm talking about the Seattle Seahawks. I'm talking about the Green Bay Packers. I'm talking about potentially the LA Rams, potentially the Arizona Cardinals. All these good teams in the NFC, they're going to have to step toe to toe with them, and they're going to be t- they're going to be faced with with a challenge into beating these teams and helping Tom Brady continue his legacy. But definitely interact with us. I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys believe about Tom Brady? Do you think he's going to go win his seventh Super Bowl with that stacked roster in Tampa Bay? Or do you believe that the season, if he were to lose and maybe even just lose out in the first round like he did last year, or even the second round, or even the championship game, the, the NFC championship game, is this season going to be a bust for Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Leave your comments, interact with us. Definitely want to hear from you guys. Moving on to the heir apparent of Tom Brady for the 2020 season, at least, Cam Newton. Ooh, it's been rough as of late for Newton. All right, it started with COVID-19. He was out for that game against the Kansas City Chiefs. And then he comes back, and the last two games has not been looking that impressive. Zero passing touchdowns, five interceptions. So that brings us total for the whole entire season. If you want to look at passing stats, uh, two touchdowns, seven interceptions, 969 yards, 71.7 quarterback rating. Rushing-wise, five rushing touchdowns, which is impressive. But four of those came in within the first two weeks. But he is averaging less than 200 yards passing a game. This is through five games. He's only thrown two passing touchdowns in five games. Seven interceptions, so that's more than one interceptions a game. Can Cam Newton turn around? And just do wonders for the Patriots and help them lead uh, Bill Belichick and this Patriots team to a, 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 another playoff spot, a consecutive playoff spot, because they haven't missed the playoffs in a very long time. 2008 was the very last time that the Patriots missed the playoffs. And in that time, Tom Brady was not the quarterback. It was Matt Castle. So another Patriots-led team, a, a quarterback outside of Tom Brady that leads the Patriots, could yet again miss the postseason. We have to really break it down. Cam Newton has not been looking good. And he was benched in favor of Jarrett Stidham. Now, Bill, Bill Belichick has come out and said, listen, absolutely, Cam Newton is going to remain the starter, which I believe is the right choice. That's what you, sh- you should do. Give him at least, at least one or two more weeks just to see how he's going. One or two more weeks, and then you can decide to move on if you really wanted to. But Bill, Bill Belichick has a lot of faith in Cam Newton. And I do too. To be honest with you guys, I believe something is going to click and I believe that this team is going to turn it around. A light bulb is going to go go off and Bill Belichick it has a knack for this. He does this all the time. He does so well with helping uh, his teams that look defeated and not look that good turn it around and to do amazing things. We want to talk about 2014. We all remember that game against the Kansas City Chiefs. In 2014, the Patriots went in into that game, came out 2-2, got defeated. I believe the score was 34-7 or maybe 41-7 was the final score. The Chiefs absolutely destroyed them. And post-game press conferences, all the media, you got Max Kellerman talking about Tom Brady's falling off a cliff. You got uh, media asking, is Bill Belichick going to bench Tom Brady in favor of Jimmy Garoppolo? Bill Belichick ended up turning that season around, making the Super Bowl, and beating the Seattle Seahawks in the Super Bowl. So he he has a knack for this. But at that point, the Patriots were 2-2. They're 2-4 right now, and it's not looking that good, especially with the emergence of Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen really turning things around and having a hold on that AFC East division. It's going to be hard for them to top that. It really is. So your best bet at this point is to make a wild card spot and man oh man that seventh wild card spot that got introduced for the 2020 season is going to be more helpful than ever more than you may think because the Patriots at this point in my eyes I believe that's the best shot that they have is making a wild card spot 
you're not going to top the Buffalo Bills by the way that they've been playing. You're just not. So the Patriots are going to have to turn it around, are going to have to get above 500 and make that wild card spot. If you watch the ads and drops videos that I came out with earlier this week, every Tuesday on this channel, you saw that I mentioned that the Buffalo Bills defense is a defense that you may want to drop. Yeah, you could stream them against the Patriots this week. I mean, if you look at the numbers, the the Patriots are giving up the third most points to opposing defenses. Yeah, understandable. I understand if you want to go ahead and and drop the or or stream the the Bills defense, but I'm telling you to drop them. I'm telling you, I'm not going to take that chance. I'm really not because you really don't know which side of Cam Newton is going to come out this Sunday against the Buffalo Bills. Sean McDermott, the, the Bills head coach has says has said that he's aware of what Cam Newton is capable of. So he's not going to take him lightly. He really isn't. And you guys shouldn't either. He's not that washed. He's still a very talented, good quarterback. Like he proved in week one against Miami. Like he proved in week two going toe-to-toe, go, going toe-to-toe with Russell Wilson. Still a very good quarterback. And I believe that this Patriots team is going to turn it around. But I definitely want to interact with the guys. And I definitely want to hear your guys' opinions. Do you believe that the Patriots are going to turn this season around and are going to, uh, Bill Belichick is just going to do his Bill Belichick thing where he just turns it around and he just ends up winning after game after game and makes a postseason and does well for, for the New England Patriots. So interact with us, leave your comments and your thoughts. Whew, that Patriots team, never count them out. They always seem to rise up from the dead and turn things around. Bill Belichick does his Bill Belichick thing. And helps the Patriots win games. Trust me, this is coming from an idiot that's wearing Atlanta Falcons gear. I know all about 28-3. to Gosh dang. I'm never going to move on from that. That's going to haunt my life for the, for the remainder of my time on this earth. Gosh, that sucks. Whatever. Let me just uh, make some money real quick. Manscaped. Okay, so Manscaped has helped me out so much in this time of my life. I always mention on the show that I got married to a hot brunette wife a month and a half ago in September and leading up to it I had to take care of my balls I had to trim I had to trim everywhere that's where the lawnmower 3.0 really came in handy and really came in handy for my wedding night and I trusted it and Manscaped really hooked me up and boy oh boy I was surprised that Manscaped lawnmower 3.0 it does not nick you at all you can use it in the shower it's waterproof It is dependable. It is more reliable than uh, Tyler Boyd in a PPR fantasy football league. It's that freaking reliable. So trust me, Manscaped, Lawnmower 3.0, that is something that you would want. The Lawnmower 3.0 is the best hygiene tool for the modern man. Because of the ceramic blade and skin-safe technology, your nicks and snacks will be reduced. This is the perfect protection needed for your franchise quarterback. The Lawnmower 3.0 is also waterproof and has an LED light on it so you can see all around the curves and the crevices. They just released their Shears 2.0 nail kit, which is perfect ad on their Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer. Their perfect package 3.0 comes with the new and approved Lawnmower Performance Boxer Briefs, which I'm wearing right now. I wish I could show you guys, but I don't want to get demonetized. And a travel bag for you to use when you're done quarantining and some other liquid formulations like the Crop Preserver and the Crop uh, Reviver. Trust me, this has ball toner in it. This has ball deodorant. Makes my balls feel amazing. For a limited time, subscribers get not only one, but two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag 39 Value Add and the patented high-performance anti-chafing Manscaped Boxer Briefs. So Time to Football Faithful, the Time to Football followers, you can get 20% off if you click the link in the description. If you are watching this on YouTube or listening to this on iTunes, click that link, go to manscaped.com, and use the promo code T2F at checkout for 20% off and free gifts on top of that. This is a very good deal. It's going to help you guys out, out a lot. Some of you followers have bought it already and have said Nothing but good things about the man uh, about the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0. So 20% off manscaped.com promo code T2F. Speaking of a guy that uh, may need some manscaping, probably doesn't. His mustache is amazing. Gardner Minshew, the quarterback of the Jacksonville Jaguars, is under hot water? Question mark. Only won one game this season. Okay, I understand because the blame goes to the quarterback even though it really shouldn't. You have a lot more holes to fill on that team. 
Hint, hint, that defense, that secondary, it's so bad. But let's talk about Minshew for a second. Let's just state the facts. Minshew is 1-6, is in, is in the hot seat of losing his starting job to Mike Glennon, the backup quarterback on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Doug Marone has stated during this bye week that's coming up in week 8, he wants to try new things. He's more excited than ever. Let me actually read you the quote by Doug Marone in regards to the bye week and what he has planned for this uh, planning period that he has this week off. I'm not going to BS anyone. I'm kind of fired up, Marone said Tuesday. And I know you guys are probably sitting like, what the hell's going on? How can this guy be fired up? They just lost six games in a row. And I understand that. I totally do, but I'm going to bust my ass. I mean, I'm telling you now. I'm going to look at some things. I want to go a little bit outside the box. I want to challenge these coaches and challenge these players and see what they can do. I'm going to do whatever I can to get the best out of this team and best out of these players. He continues. I'm sure people are going to mock me for that or say whatever the hell they want. Yep, you're right. But I really don't give a S word. I have no problem saying it, but I, like I said, I really don't want to get demonetized. I'm fired up. I'm going to go after it, and however it falls, it falls. But it's open for me. I've done, I've done crazy crap before. A lot of people don't know. We changed an offense four or five days prior to the opening of our season in Syracuse my last year. We just went in a whole different direction, and crap, it's it worked out. The words of head coach Doug Marone. What does that mean? Doing crazy things. Does that mean that he's going to be going for it on fourth down more often? Does that mean that he's going to use gadget players like LaVisca Chenault more often in the run game? Going to do crazy wildcat formations, whatever it may be. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, this topic is about Gardner Minshew. So let's talk about Gardner Minshew. Currently is dealing with multiple fractures in his throwing hand. His status for week 9 and forward is unknown. So this might be a good time for the Jaguars to experiment with some things. Experiment with Mike Glennon. Take Gardner Minshew out and see if that revitalizes your team and helps the Jaguars win some games. Minshew at this point 13 touchdowns through 7 games. 5 interceptions. Had a lot of fumbles as well. So that all can't be attributed to him. That has to be attributed to that offensive line. 1,800 passing yards, 66% passes of his uh, of his passes completed, 94.4 quarterback rating. Okay, so you look at these stats, not bad at all. Pretty freaking good. As a matter of fact, if you came uh, or if you put him in or if you keep him in to the game and if he's good to go, he's healthy, his throwing hand is hurt or is, is fine, is healthy, he's on pace for throwing for 30 passing touchdowns this season to 11 interceptions. Not that bad of a season pretty freaking good for you guys that play fantasy football i have stated this over and over again every single week Minshew is one of the most consistent quarterbacks in fantasy football not not the best not the best but he's above average and if you look at his uh uh the the window of points that he scores he scores between 18 to 22 fantasy points every single week it's ridiculous he had one bad game against the miami dolphins but that's pretty much it he's pretty freaking good so at this point, they're willing to move on with Minshew. Minshew did not tell the team about his injuries that he suffered against the Houston Texans in that loss uh, in Week 6 because I, I, I want to say I don't blame him because if you were to tell that team about the injury and then you were to take him out and then Mike Lennon comes in, then Doug Marone might be okay with the fact of continuing to put Mike Lennon in as the starting quarterback just to help revitalize this Jaguars team. So Minshew didn't want to lose his starting jobs, but but at this point he's gonna he's in danger of losing his starting job. So with all that being said, let's talk about Mike Lennon, the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, the former Arizona Cardinal, has jumped around team to team. I think had an appearance with the uh, Las Vegas Raiders as well back when they were in Oakland. Is he a better option than Gardner Minshew? In my note right now, it has one question. It says, is Mike Lennon better? And underneath it is just one word. Nope. Minshew is the reason that the Jaguars have been in close games. I mean, you look at last week against the Chargers. Somewhat of a close game until the very end. The Jaguars were in it because of Gardner Minshew having to throw for 300 touchdowns, having to throw for two or three touchdowns. Maybe you get an interception or two out of that, but he put up 300 and a couple scores on top of that. 
to keep this team alive because that Jaguars defense is so bad. That secondary is horrendous and gives up so many points. You lost A.J. Bouye to the Broncos. You lost Jalen Ramsey when you traded him away. You need help in that secondary. C.J. Henderson is not going to do it all. So this Jaguars defense needs a lot more help more than that quarterback position does. But Doug Marone feels otherwise and because of the injury as well is okay with moving on from Gardner Minshew and I don't know if he's going to start another game for the Jacksonville Jaguars at this point. Maybe he moves on to another team. He could be a good bridge quarterback until another team finds their franchise quarterback. But Doug Marone is set on making Mike Glennon the starter, it seems like, after the week eight bye. But leave your opinions below in the comments. Chat with us if you're uh, watching this live as we premiere it. What are your thoughts on Gardner Minshew? Do you believe that he is the best and right choice for the Jaguars? Or do you believe that Mike Lennon is going to cause some sort of spark with that Jaguars offense? Interact with us and leave your comments. The last topic that we want to talk about, the NFC West. The Seattle Seahawks, the San Francisco 49ers, the Arizona Cardinals, and the Los Angeles Rams. All four great teams capable of winning that division title. The question is, who's going to run away with that division title by the end of the year? And are all four teams capable of making the NFL playoffs? You've got to admit first, they're the toughest division in football. You've got to you, you you've got to look past that first. You could say that the AFC North, yeah, you got the Steelers, yeah, they're good. The Ravens are good. The the Browns by the record, they're good. But then you've got the Bengals. See, you've got every division here and there that you want to argue is the toughest division in football. You've got one or two teams in each division just bringing each division down. Whereas the NFC West, all four of these teams are capable of winning a division title. The weakest team in that division, record-wise, San Francisco 49ers, they've been dealt with so many injuries and they've still got a winning record thus far in 2020. They're four and three. When they get Richard Sherman back in week 11, when you get Raheem Mostert back, Tevin Coleman just got activated this week, you're going to see a different San Francisco Francisco 49ers team. And this team really hasn't complained about the injuries that they've had. The injuries that they've had should have made them 2-5 and at this point, but instead they're 4-3. and Kind of like my fantasy football team, if I want to brag a bit. I had Saquon Barkley, I had Odell Beckham Jr., Le'Veon Bell got hurt, and he got fired, Debo Samuel, Dallas Goddard is hurt. Man, I've been dealt with all the wrong cards but I'm still three and four which isn't the best but given that the the cards I've been dealt I'm still in the thick of things the San Francisco uh, San Francisco 49ers are in the same boat in the thick of things just shows how good of a coaching staff they ha- that they have and how they're able to adjust and go with that next man up mentality the Los Angeles Rams five and two great showing last week against the Chicago Bears I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on them that offense is not as high powered as it used to be in the couple years uh, that they've had in, in, in past seasons, but still a very good team. This Rams defense is doing much better than we expected going into the season. They lost a lot of key pieces and they still look very good. So this Rams team do not sleep on them. Another team that you shouldn't be sleeping on the Arizona Cardinals five and two. They really proved it against the Seattle Seahawks this past week in overtime on Sunday night football. Going toe-to-toe, Kyler Murray going toe-to-toe with Russell Wilson, causing their best player, Russell Wilson, to make mistakes, which does not happen often. Great coaching by Cliff Kingsbury and and company, and they were able to beat the Seattle Seahawks and move on to 5-2. But the Seahawks have that half-game lead in that division, 5-1. If you want to ask me, in my opinion, I believe that the Seattle Seahawks have, have the best chance of winning this division and going on and moving forward to potentially a Super Bowl appearance. They're a half game ahead with that division lead in the NFC West. They're currently 5-2. and two. If we look at the playoff seed and currently, the Seahawks are the number two seed. But remember, there are seven seeds in the, in, in the playoffs this year for the NFC and the AFC. Meaning that the first two seeds do not get a first round bye. So for the time being, the Seahawks, if the Seahawks, or if the season were to start today, the Seahawks would not have a first round bye. Then you've got the Arizona Cardinals at the number six uh, spot. The LA Rams, they're very thankful for that seven seed playoff rule. They're currently the number seven seed. And then you got the 49ers outside looking at, at number nine, but they're capable of moving up inside of that. But can all four teams win and, and keep on winning and win into the playoffs? The answer is yes, absolutely. 
because the number five seed currently the Chicago Bears, five and two. Can they keep up being the number five seed? Uh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. Great defense. And that's the reason why they've been doing so good is because of that defense. But that offense, they've got to get things together, man. They've got to turn things around. Otherwise, they're going to lose their playoff spot. Because if they drop down from the number five seed, you've got the Cardinals moving up. You've got the Rams moving up. And then the 49ers could take their spot and get into the NFC playoffs. But I feel like that the Seahawks have the best chance of winning this division because Russell Wilson does not make a lot of mistakes. The Cardinals beat them, yes, but that was a very rare occurrence where Russell Wilson threw three interceptions. That does not happen often. You had to, I don't want to say get lucky, but you had to game plan accordingly and you had to give it your all in that game and beat Russell Wilson and beat that high-powered Seahawks offense, and you did. And that's not going to happen often, and the Seahawks are going to win this division from the looks of it. But I feel like all four teams have the chance of making the NFL playoffs. Interact with us. Leave your comments down below. What do you guys believe? Will this be a first in NFL history? Now to move on to the last topic for today. We've got fantasy football questions that we like to answer for you guys. So currently I've been... uh, pretty non-responsive on the YouTube comments. What I like to do is I like to answer you guys on social media and on uh, the YouTube comments uh, throughout the week, but it's been pretty difficult as my audience keeps on growing. I've been having more and more people reach out to me, so I've been having to uh, respond to them. I've also been uh, per- currently, like personal reasons, a, a buddy of mine passed away uh, this week, um, so just been kind of busy with a, a lot of things as well. But um, we've got fantasy football questions that we answer on the show every single week. So we like to make time for you guys to submit your questions, and we like to answer those for you guys. So let's just take a few and uh, answer for you guys. By the way, I just want to say we've been saying this every single week. The uh, one guy, one of the commenters referred to them as the Chinese babes. I like to say that they're Asian bots. They are non-existent, ladies and gentlemen. That's That deserves a round of applause. Finally, the Asian bots have been commenting relentlessly on those videos, on those starts and sits videos. They are gone completely. And that's all because of you guys reporting them. So just, I tip my hat. I tip my let down of a hat to you guys. Thank you guys so much. But we just picked a few of these uh, fan questions we're going to answer for you guys. First up is by YouTuber Young EB. I have Herbert and Brady. I'm torn as they were the last two QBs last week. And yes, Herbert is playing a really bad defense, but Brady is playing against the Giants and has an extra day to prepare. What do you think? I like your thinking, Young AB. I really do. And I feel like that Tom Brady is a start the rest of the way. But I would go with the kid. I'd go with Justin Herbert. I would go with, I love, let me catch myself. I love quarterbacks that have rushing ability over just pocket passers. I know that Tom Brady is just playing lights out, is being is throwing five touchdowns after five touchdowns. I understand that, but Herbert is looking great. And the upside with Herbert is there every single week. Her- Herbert is going into that category of being a must-start every single week. So is Tom Brady. I understand that. But Herbert, because of that rushing ability, because he can get you that uh, that quarterback run that scramble outside the pocket score a rushing touchdown i love the upside with herbert i really do so i'm going to say herbert over brady this week this next one is from uh salvador sc should i start jimmy graham no offense or hunter henry okay so the hassan of the past would have told you to start hunter henry because he's a reliable talented tight end but if you look at the stats of hunter henry he's been kind of a letdown recently uh he's been in that category of someone like Evan Ingram, I would say. Someone that's supposed to be talented and good and a reliable cornerstone tight end for the team, but just not getting that many... Well, he's getting targets. He's just not connecting with his quarterback for whatever reason. So Hunter Henry is out of the picture for me, but if you have to start him, I understand. Jimmy Graham is kind of interesting. It's kind of a revenge game for Jimmy Graham facing the Saints, so he could pop off. The Saints have been terrible terrible against tight ends so i understand where you could come from and and stream jimmy graham 
but no Fant is the most reliable player, uh, one of the most reliable tight ends this season, and he's slowly getting into that five most reliable tight ends for me. Probably not the five best tight ends in the NFL, but he's creeping into, as far as fantasy football goes, the five most reliable tight ends. Noah Fant would be in there uh, in my eyes in that category. So I would start Noah Fant out of those three. Next one, Mighty Logster. Do I play Josh Allen or Carson Wentz? Whew. Tough one. I would say Josh Allen, but you got to ask your question. I, I was listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Great podcast. Uh, I listen to them on occasion here. They're not every single day, but uh, had the time last last night to to listen to them. And they're talking about Josh Allen on, on yesterday's episode. They're talking about, is he going to be a top 10 quarterback this week? And against the New England Patriots with Stephon Diggs getting shadowed by uh, uh, Stephon Gilmore. I, he, he hasn't been looking the greatest the last two weeks. And I think he's going to look a little bit better, but I don't see him finishing inside of the top 10 this week. He may be borderline. He may be nine, maybe 10, but it, it's going to be tough. Whereas Carson Wentz against the Dallas Cowboys, a Cowboys defense that couldn't even stop Kyle Allen of the Washington football team. Carson Wentz is the way to go, who's been averaging 23 fantasy points a game the last five games. Next one is from Riley McDonald. Should I start Fulgham or Ayuk? Ayuk is my choice. Fulgham is going to be dealing with the return of potentially Alshon Jeffrey. Jalen Rager just got activated from IR, so we don't know if he's going to be playing yet. Dallas Goddard just got activated from IR, so we don't know if he's going to be playing yet. Richard Rodgers is in the mix as well, believe it or not. Uh, so Fulgham is going to be dealing with a lot of target shares, whereas the 49ers, their wide receiver, the, the best wide receiver on that team is going to be Brandon Ayuk against the worst team in the NFL when it comes to stopping wide receivers, the Seattle Seahawks. Ayuk with Debo Samuel hurt, hurting his ha- hamstring. He's the way to go. So uh, I actually put in a bid to acquire Ayuk this past week to stream him because I've got Debo Samuel and I'm a Samuel owner. He's, but uh, someone beat me to him. So Ayuk, he's going to be the start uh, over Travis Fulgham. Next one is from Kevin Mishnewich. Mich- Mishnewich? Kevin Mishnewich. How do you feel about Hasty and Bernard this week? Hasty is a must sit for me. He's a must sit. Tevin Coleman just got activated from IR, and I feel like Tevin Coleman is going to be that new Jeff Wilson that was uh, against the New England Patriots last week. So he's going to get mo- the majority of the groundwork. Hasty just comes in here and there just to release some fre- uh, some pressure and uh, is going to be a good complimentary back. But with Jarek McKinnon now finally healthy, with Kyle Shanahan okay with letting him loose, with Tevin Coleman coming back and getting into the mix as well, it's going to be Coleman and McKinnon all week, all day. Uh, this week against the Seattle Seahawks. As far as Bernard goes, he has a pretty decent matchup against the Tennessee Titans. If you're in a PPR league, I would start Giovanni Bernard. Had uh, five or six receptions last week, scored a touchdown. Uh, in half PPR, he scored about 19, 18 or 19 fancy points. So uh, Giovanni Bernard is a good fill-in for Joe Mixon. Uh, let's do a couple more. This next one is from TB12. I got offered McKinnon from the 49ers for Hasty. Should I accept this trade? Please help. Yes, absolutely. Hasty is not going to last. Hasty was a guy that they had to, had to activate off the practice squad because of the injuries that they were dealing with the 49ers. I wouldn't be surprised when you get towards the end of the season that's at this rate if the 49ers were to activate Raheem Mostert uh, off of IR, if they were to get Jeff Wilson back, and then you finally have your top four running backs back healthy, if hasty, they demote him back into the uh, practice squad, meaning they release him and then sign him again to the practice squad. So McKinnon is the way to go over hasty. I would accept that in a heartbeat. This last one from Garage of Horror. I'm kind of nervous putting Gasicki in my lineup. Already with a new rookie QB. Do you think Richard Rodgers is safer? It's it's going to be tough. It really is. Uh, I, I have Mike Kosicki as a must-start this week. A lot of other sites and analysts have Mike Kosicki as a must-sit. So if you want to base it off of that, it's going to be 50-50. You could sit Mike Kosicki. I'm big on him. I think he's a great talent. Uh, I think he's going to be 
wonderful once it gets good with the chemistry with Tua Tokovailoa, but Richard Rodgers is a safer bet. If you want to look at statistics, Carson Wentz targets on average tight ends. He targets tight ends 12 times a game on average this season. So are, are all 12 going to go to Richard Richard Rodgers? I don't know. It could. I mean, who else do you have at tight end? So I would start Richard Rodgers against a good defense or a good matchup against a bad defense in the Dallas Cowboys. Woo! That's, that's it. That's going to do it for this episode of Time 2 Football. Uh, did you guys enjoy this episode? If you guys did, definitely rate and review this episode if you guys are listening to this on uh, iTunes on the podcast app. Five stars, nothing less. Also, if you guys are watching this video up on YouTube, uh, leave a comment down below. And thank you guys for chatting with us if you guys are premiering this live before the Thursday night game. Again, join me as I cry as the Atlanta Falcons yet again blow another lead probably. But that's okay because uh, we suck and we're going to get a high draft pick. And hopefully we'll get a good player out of it. Uh, Thomas Dimitrov is gone. New general manager. Cannot wait. Um, But yeah, that's it for this week's episode of Time to Football. Thanks again for you guys watching. It is week eight. And Adam Gates is still the head coach of the New York Jets. And I will see you guys next week. Enjoy the game.